Hello everyone, it's Katerina Rykovsky and I decided to make this video about uh, Central Asian Shepherd health problem. Every breed, every dog have some health issues. Some breeds have more health issues than others. And uh, let's talk about what Central Asian uh, Shepherd as a breed, uh, what problems they do have. Uh, since Central Asian Shepherd is a bigger than average uh, dog, they do have a problems with their uh, joints. So they can have a problem with hips, hips dysplasia. They can have ACL rupture. Uh, they can have elbow dysplasia. They can have uh, problems with the shoulder. They can have uh, problems with the spine. Uh, so um, typical breed dog health problem. Uh, so let's talk about uh, hip dysplasia. Uh, when I was younger, um, I always thought that hip dysplasia is uh, only affecting only affecting dogs who are poorly bred. And actually, I was naive and thought that if dog is a show champion, they are probably tested for a, for a health problem, and they will not have a, a hips or elbow dysplasia. This is how I really thought. I thought if you are showing your dog and then breeding you need to be sure that it's not just beautiful dog, but it's also a totally healthy dog. I mean, not totally, but at least it's at certain uh, criteria, it's healthy. So this is how I saw it. So I saw if dog is a champion, they are healthy with uh, hips and elbows. But I was wrong. Uh, in, in many countries, people are, are doing no testing for Central Asian Shepherds at all, because they think it's no reason to. Uh, this breeder thinks that since uh, the breed is having tendency to have hips and elbow dysplasia, so what's the reason then to test parents if uh, puppies will still be affected no matter what? Um, I'm not agree with it. I think if you have a mother and father and some of them have a um, joint problem, it's better not to breed the dog, but you also want to look to what extent is bad. As example, in Europe, they do breed dogs of different breeds, uh, like uh, with, a, with a hip rate C. C, it's a mild hips by Orthopedic Foundation for Animals in the United States. So it's a mild dysplasia. You barely can see it actually on an X-ray. Uh, uh, I recently found interesting website and you will see uh, the link to this website in the video description, so check it out. Uh, and uh, it's talk about dysplasia and what you can do about dysplasia and why it's happening in different breeds as well. Uh, Purina, Purina, you know, the dog food, did an amazing experiment some years ago in which they raised Labrador Retriever's puppies under two conditions. From each litter, one pup went into a group that was allowed to eat as normal and its litter mate was fed 25% less than the sibling. They followed these dogs for life and the results were astonishing. Some dogs in the control group, the ones who were eating normal, uh, and, uh, were dysplastic. Uh, and uh, by six years of, of old, half of the dog in this group who just have a normal diet were dysplastic. In the restricted food group, they just feed dogs a little bit smaller portions. On the other hand, only 10% of dogs were dysplastic by age 6 and 12% uh, and, and 12 years still only 50% 50, 50 were dysplastic. So it shows that dog uh, who had a smaller weight, uh, they had a less problem. Um, but we always talk about that hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, it's a breed, breed, uh, breed specific if it's a big dog. But if you look at the table, look here, it will be here. I will um, put these tables here. You will see that uh, first, first rank uh, in a, a quantity of dysplastic uh, affected dogs, it's a bulldog and pug. And bulldog is not a big dog, but very heavy, heavy body, right? It's short and heavy. And pug, you know, it's a decorative breed. They're heavy for their build. Then it's a dog at the Bordeaux, Otterhound, Neapolitan Mastiff, Saint Bernard. And in the end of the list, uh, they have um, like a dogs with a smaller body index. 
So what it shows, so it's not just a big and tall dog, but it's a dog who is very robust. And Central Asian Shepherd is a dog uh, who is uh, robust. It's, 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 a, it's a heavy frame, right? You cannot say that this Central Asian Shepherd have a, a heavy bone and this one have a light bone. This is really stupid to tell like that. It's not exist, right? The male dog have a bigger bone, so it's heavier than female. And if, uh, like in the humans, if you are um, six feet tall, you are heavier than person uh, who, who is like way shorter than you. So we will not use uh, such description as a heavy bone puppy, light bone puppy. It's, it's really uh, funny and uh, um, kind of silly to say this way. So we can definitely tell that uh, how you feed the dog and how you keep it when it's growing does affect the joint problem. So if you keep your dog in a healthy weight and even on a lean way while it's growing, it will be less affected with the joint problems. Of course, if dog is already predisposition to the hips or elbow problems, no matter how you will feed it, no matter if you will um, restrict the exercises and do everything, it will still develop. But if you know that uh, this big breed of dog have predisposition to develop uh, hip and elbow problems, you need to feed it less. Okay, you want to keep it lean. You don't want to starve it. You don't want to see bones through, but you want to have your puppy growing lean. Okay, uh, so what does it mean? We don't need to test the dogs if we are breeding them because uh, they still will get sick. No, I don't think so. I know that some breeders use this information, like this article you will find in description, to justify the absence of X-raying for hips and elbows for their dogs. They told me, they told me, these breeders, what for to do X-ray if it will not change anything? They told me that displeasure will jump down a new litter from a past. And affect new puppy. Uh, dysplasia is a poly polygenetic uh, disease, so it's not just genetic. Uh, scientific research show no specific gene which uh, shows that it's uh, come with dysplasia. So it's environmental and it's genetic and predisposition of the body. I know that other breeders who eliminate every dog, even with a mild dysplasia, they said they only breed excellent to excellent. And you know what's happened? Even from excellent parents, I will put this table uh, in, in a separate video frame so you can see, but it shows it's from Orthopedic Foundation of Animals. Even if you breed excellent hips to excellent hips, you will still get almost 4% of these plastic dogs. It's like, oh my God, but what I can do? You will breed excellent hips to... Uh, mild dysplasia, you will get almost 14% of these plastic dogs. It's like what we can do. It's not means that you need to throw away every dog who is mild dysplastic, but is doing ever, uh, good, but you really need to think what you are doing. Uh, breeders who refuse to do any health testing, and they will tell you, ah, oh, it's no reason, my dog is running and jumping, I wouldn't say it's good, right? You need, you still need to, to, to do x-ray and then make a decision. Uh, some dogs, they can have very bad hips, very shallow hips, and they will never show the problem. You will only see it x-ray, on x-ray. Some dogs can have a very mild dysplasia, but they already limp in and have pain. So ask your breeder why they prefer not to do uh, x-ray on the parents and if they try to tell it's no reason to and jump from generation I would personally avoid I would avoid uh, such answer I don't think it's good you need to breed at least healthy parents okay this is the right thing to do so uh, look in the description for links where you can read about dysplasia it's a scientific research very interesting and um, I hope it will help you to understand more also, if you want to read more about health of uh, Central Asian Shepherds and problems, you can still get my book. I still have these books for sale. You can get this book at Amazon, but it will be black and white. I have a colored edition with the colorful pictures in the end. 
So I can send you this book and I will sign it for your name if you like, if you're in the United States. And it will be $45 and shipping is free. And you can read more about the breed and also about why the health problems are happening. And recently, health problems start to be worse because dogs became more kennel bred and heavier and heavier and bigger and bigger. Bigger size, more problems. Have a nice day.